For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find a p-value when you're dealing with a z-test um, for the given standardized test statistic and tail of the test. And then we would also decide if we should reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis based on the given level of significance. The given level of significance is just denoted by alpha. So the alpha level is your level of significance. Since we have a z-score, that means that we are dealing with a normal curve. And so it's always a good idea just to sketch a picture of what you're dealing with. The negative 2.05 would be to the left of zero. So if it's a negative z-score, it's to the left of the center, which is zero. If it's a positive z-score, it would be to the right. And then the left tail tells us which tail of the test to shade. So our p-value is just the area that is to the left of the standardized test statistic. Okay, so the p-value is just the probability that our z-score or that our values are less than negative 2.05. So how likely is it to be negative 2.05 or to the left of that? Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to grab, grab the TI Inspire graphing calculator to see what it looks like. Okay, and I had already started one. I'm going to just start over. So I'm going to hit on and start with a new document. Okay, and I'm just going to add a calculator screen. So you can add a calculator screen or you could have just continued with the document that you were working with. And I'm going to select menu and you can either go to option five probability or option six statistics. So under six, um, the distributions is number five and under probability, it's also the same place. So I'll show you the next time how to do it that way. Okay. Um, then we would choose option two, the normal CDF. So our lower bound is negative 9E999, which is really negative infinity. It's negative nine with 999 zeros behind it. The upper bound would be the z-score that we are given. So our z-score that we are given is two point, my keyboard's not working, 2.05. All right, the mean is going to be zero and the standard deviation one since we are dealing with a z-score. Anytime it's a z-score, we just use zero and one for the mean and the standard deviation. And we can see that our p-value is 0 0.0202 approximately. And then to make a decision, what we do is we compare our p-value to our alpha. So we're going to set up our p-value of 0 0.0202 and compare it to our alpha. So since 0 0.0202 is less than the alpha of 0 0.05, that means that we reject. Anytime our p-value is less than or equal to, we make the decision to reject. If it's greater than, then we fail to reject. All right, so let's look at the other two situations, a right tail and a two tail, and how to find the p-value in those situations. So if I draw out my curve, this time it says that z is 1.87, so it would be to the right. And the reason I shaded to the right was that it says right tail. If it said left tail, then I would shade to the left. So you always go the same direction that it tells you to. So our p-value is just the probability that z is greater than that standardized test statistic. How likely is it to get this standardized test statistic or something more extreme? So if we grab our calculator again, this time I'm going to show you that you can also go under probability. So I could have gone to five probability. And then it is also number five distributions and two normal CDF. This time, since it's a right tail and we started shading at 1.87, we would do 1.87 to positive infinity. And I'm just going to use a one and the E um, that stands for exponential notation is this double E right here. And I'm just going to do 99. That's large enough. It's one with 99 zeros behind it. You could go one E999, um, but one E99 is far enough. Okay, and for this one, we get 
zero seven. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong place on my paper and I got confused for a second. 0 0.0307, I thought for a moment that I did something wrong, but it's just because I glanced down at my paper at the wrong place. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to compare our p-value to alpha. And so we see that 0 0.0307 compared to 0 0.10, that is also less than, so we would make the same decision. We would reject the null hypothesis. All right, for a two-tail test, what we are going to do is we are going to shade both tails. So I'm going to shade this tail, and I'm going to shade this tail. So technically what's happening here is we have z equals 1.92 and z equals negative 1.92. So this is going to be half of my p-value, and this is also going to be half of my p-value. Okay, so to find the p-value, what we are going to do is we are going to do 2 times the probability that z is greater than 1.92. We could have also done 2 times the probability that a z is less than negative 1.92. Um, so what you can do, if you don't want to go through the menus, you can also arrow up to grab things and just hit enter. And then we could just go over to the left and change the two values that we need to change. Everything else stays the same. We would just change this to 92 and hit enter, and that gives us our value. Remember that we do need to multiply this by 2. And so our final p-value would be 0 0.0549 approximately. Okay, so then if I compare my two values, 0 0.0549 compared to 0 0.05, it is greater than, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so at this point, what I want you to do is try two on your own to make sure that you understand how to do these. So you're going to do a you try. Go ahead and pause the video. Try both of these on your own. And then once you have tried them and have an answer, resume watching so that you um, can make sure you did it correctly. All right, now that you have taken the time to answer the questions, let me go ahead and draw out the picture. Since this is a two tail, that tells me I'm going to shade both of my tails. And my z is negative 1.75 and positive 1.75. Since it's two tail, it's always both this value and its opposite. Remember that for this one, the p-value is going to be two times the probability that z is greater than 1.75. Okay, so we will plug that into our calculator. So I'm going to do two times. And then if you wanted to, after you put that in, you can always go up and just copy again. Or you can go through the menu and do it that way. There's two different ways that you could do this. So I'm just going to change this to 1.75 and then hit enter and we can see that it's 0 0.0801 so this is going to be approximately 0 0.0801 and then we would compare our p-values so 0 0.0801 compared to 0 0.05 is it's greater than so you would have failed to reject h sub zero okay and then the last one that we have is we have z equals 1.99 and it is a right tail so we would go to the right of this one so for this one we would just be looking for the probability that z is greater than 1.99 we don't multiply this one by two so if you are grabbing in your calculator make sure that you grab one that's not multiplied by two so if we wanted to we could just come up here to the 1.92 and we can change the 1.92 to 1.99 and then hit enter and we get 0 0.0233 and then if we compare our p-value to our alpha we can see that 0 0.0233 is less than our alpha of 0 0.10 so for this one we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so anytime 
that your p-value is less than your alpha level. That means that your values are more extreme than the cutoff that you had decided on to start with. And so you are going to reject. If it is greater than, remember that you are going to fail to reject. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.